Hey, happy Tuesday. Welcome back. I've uh, been getting lots of questions and calls and uh, comments about NIST 800-207. So we're going to break that down quickly, run through some points and some takeaways about it, and uh, have a little conversation about NIST. Okay, so to answer one of the first questions that's been coming across, is this NIST 800-207 thing going to be the, uh, the guiding document for all zero trustee stuff in the U.S. federal government and the DOD? may eventually work its way there. If you look at the publication sort of uh, progress for stuff that comes out of NIST, 853 was published 2005, still being updated in 2017-18. So you're looking at what, 12, 13 years worth of evolution there. Uh, one, I think it was uh, 171 was published uh, almost like half a decade ago and it's still working its way through you know formalization. So this document just came out, still in draft stage. This is a government body um, with lots of other things going on. This is gonna take them quite a while for it to become any sort of standardized compliance related uh, item. Now, that being said, it will guide thinking uh, and that's exactly what NIST is doing here. And it, it is published uh, solely with the purposes of getting the DOD and the CIOs and the people that read this information to be familiar with what a lot of these zero trust principles are. And it's coming from a government body. It's coming from NIST. It's not coming from vendors. It's not coming from analysts. It's not coming from the media. This is coming from the government and the government likes to eat things from the government. Um, yes, they'll buy products. Yes, they'll leverage vendor solutions and services and et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately when you get into the upper echelons of the people that set policy, set guidance, those type of things, they don't want to be told by outside bodies what to do with their networks, their enterprises. They want it to come from somewhere within the DOD. So in my opinion, in the overall, uh, is this a good sort of thing for the DOD to have its own government body, especially NIST, publishing something about uh, Zero Trust and will it help? Yes, it will. Yes, it's a good thing. Um, it's a different version of what we probably all thought that this would be, but that's not necessarily bad. I'll tell you why. Interestingly enough, one of the most uh, poignant things that came out when I read through this document, I read through it quite a few times over the weekend, was Section 1. Uh, usually government stuff doesn't actually have any useful content until you're down into Segment 3 or 4. But Segment 1, uh, this, this couple of lines in here, ZTA focuses on protecting resources, not network segments, as the network location is no longer seen as the prime component to the security posture of the resource. This document contains an abstract definition of ZTA, abstract definition of ZTA, and gives general, general deployment models and use cases where ZTA could improve an enterprise's overall IT security posture. That being said, by NIST is basically NIST saying, look, this is just something we're trying to put out there. We want you to get familiar with it. We want you to start understanding what this zero trust thing is. However, we believe categorically that the old method of perimeter-based security is no longer enforceable. So what we are telling you the standard needs to be is to move away from enforcing those controls and dial in on pushing the perimeter, the edge, the control plane, whatever you want to call it, to the resource. And that's a big difference from the federal government. The federal government has been deeply, deeply entrenched in perimeter-based security for decades. So the fact that NIST is coming out right now and is saying, look, perimeter, fail, new way, zero trust, that's a good thing, but they flat say very early on in this document, this is a different approach. This is a general sort of idea and concept. What we should take away from that is that this is not the end-all, be-all. This is not the super detailed level of zero trust that we would expect necessarily from a body like NIST to come up with. But you got to start somewhere. Great place to start. Good point to start. Now, the last couple things in section one that I think are of interest, this document does not give specific guidance or recommendations on how to deploy zero trust components in an enterprise. It says it right there, line 137 and 138. So again, NIST is saying, look, we're going to introduce this concept, we're going to introduce the theory, we're going to talk about some ways that you could do this, but we are not giving specific guidance or recommendations, and we're not telling you, DOD, agency, CIOs, how to deploy zero trust. This is all theory, 
Line in the sand, let's start with that. Now, here's some great stuff too. When you get down into sections two and three, uh, this document starts talking about incremental uh, adoption of zero trust. Uh, line 293 through 296, implement zero trust principles, process change, technology solutions, etc., etc. It talks about living in a hybrid zero trust world because they realize that this is the government, this is DOD, this is a battleship. You're not just going to you know, turn a switch and all of a sudden be zero trusty. This is going to take a long time. This is an evolution. Uh, it says flat out that uh, most enterprise infrastructures will operate in a hybrid zero trust slash legacy mode during this time while continuing to invest in ongoing IT modernization initiatives. Basically, that's NIST saying we realize that this is not going to be something we can do tomorrow. This is not something that is uh, turn the switch. Um, this is going to take a long time, and that's a very good thing. The fact that the organization that's leading some of this charge and getting people to wrap their head around it in the DOD is literally saying, like, we're not telling you to rip and replace. We're not telling you to just turn this thing on. We're not even saying that it's ready to go right now. We're telling you that this is going to take a while. We want you to continue to invest in your regular stuff, but start plotting, planning, and scheming to get to zero trust in the long run. Section three, it starts talking about the fact that, and I say this in lots of speeches all over the place, I tell people that you've already been doing zero trust. It says, have been moving to uh, network security based on zero trust principles for over a decade. Federal agencies have been building capabilities and policies, starting with FISMA, RMF, FIC, uh, FICAM, TIC, CDM, all those programs, if you look at them, have actually been implementing zero trust at different component areas and different layers within the DOD, different network, uh, access management, identity, all that. It's all been these pieces and puzzles going on based on all those programs. So what they're saying is, DOD folks, because you subscribed all these other policies, programs, procedures, you've been doing zero trust, wink, wink, you just haven't called it zero trust. You've been doing stuff. So let's stop doing stuff. Let's start implementing strategy and let's start figuring out how we can take CDM and tie it into uh, RMF and how FICAM can integrate with FISMA and all these other things, how those procedures, policies, components can start working together to enable the grand strategic objective of zero trust for DOD networks. So, Question answered from here till this document gets burned up somewhere. Is our folks moving to zero trust whether they want to uh, admit it or not? Yes. If you're doing all these things, you've been enabling zero trust. You just haven't called it that. Later on in section three is where things probably get a little bit bristly for some folks that have been uh, wrapped around zero trust and have sort of stayed with the legacy definition of it and have not moved into some of the new revolutions of it really lines 355 and 356 this definition focuses on the crux of the issue crux of the issue single most important thing which is to eliminate unauthorized access to data and services coupled with making access control enforcement as granular as possible that's different because legacy zero trust talks about hardcore data discovery and then micro perimeterization and then moving into these other things later super got to be able to do that very very important but in the grand scheme of how achievable that is, depending on the maturity of the organization, that may be really, really hard to do. So what we're saying in this document is federal agencies, DOD organizations that have all these other access management controls, you've got your CAT card, you've got two or three FA, um, <clears throat> it's very dialed in, role-based access control, et cetera. We wanna focus on taking care of that first because in, in, in all and everything else, that's what matters most. You can have the most secure firewalled off thing on the planet, but you have one bad admin, one bad username and password, it's all for naught. Coupled with that, and I'll say this flat out, there is, is no technology available on the market today that does data discovery, classification, and schematization like it has been subscribed in past zero trust research. Does not exist. There are different ways to do data security. There are DLP-ish things. There are all kinds of approaches. However, comma, if you look at the straight up legacy definition of what you're supposed to be doing in zero trust with discovery, classify, micro schematize, all that stuff, 
that solution does not exist on the market. So that being said, this is a very good way to solve a very realistic problem. And it's being told, uh, it's being dictated by NIST that you should start with this. So take away from that, small businesses, everybody else that's engaged in zero trust, unless you're more mature than the DOD doing hardcore cybersecurity, you should probably think about doing this first because what it says right there, the crux of the issue, which is to eliminate unauthorized access to data and services. If you can do that, you can solve all that other stuff as you progress through that life cycle. Okay, in section five is where it starts getting into this PE, PA, PEP thing. This is kind of the Google Beyond Corpy type deal where you're talking about a trust reference engine and the decision engine and being able to uh, dive in on that it even talks about what a trust algorithm should look like. All good stuff. Um, it, but it also says flat out in lines 562 and 563 that offerings are currently available on the market. Vendors, this means vendor world. You can sell this stuff to the DOD if you subscribe to the grand strategy. You speak zero trust correctly. And you should probably study the hell out of this document. It talks about PE and PA components are combined in a single service offering. What does that sound like? Sounds like a zero trust platform to me. So that being said, this is a good thing for the vendor community because there's lots and lots of vendors. If you were at RSA this year, rushing to enable zero trust, this means that you have an avenue, a conduit to get in there and say that PE, PA, PEP sort of thing with the trust algorithm and all the metrics and all the stuff that comes in and making the decision based on access controls and limiting it and doing zero trusty whatever, we have that capability. However, you need to make sure that your people understand how to sell this to the DOD and you need to make sure that they understand the realities of the problem they're solving. Don't just go in there and go zero trust. We sell lots of zero trust because that's not going to work. These people are educated on it. They understand it. They know what the problem is they're trying to solve. Lastly, the document talks about deploying zero trust. How an enterprise migrates to ZTA strategy depends on their current cybersecurity posture. Said this a thousand times over, done workshops on it, do consulting engagements on it, really get in there with people and try and whiteboard this or draw it out or whatever. The main takeaway from that is that this is entirely based on the maturity of the organization. If you are not an organization that has been deeply steeped in zero trust, you're not someone that's been deeply steeped in hardcore perimeter uh, security controls that has a, a history of fighting the bad guys and doing it, doing it very well and has a very mature program. It literally tells you, you should start from focusing on simple things like identifying actors, assets, processes, risk, formulating policies, identifying the solutions, deploy and monitor and expand that program. That's a life cycle. It's telling you to start from the simple stuff, work your way to the hard stuff, and when you get through, you continue to do that. So the the question about where do we start in zero trust and how do we get there, et cetera, is answered, in my opinion, a lot in this document. It's based on the maturity of the organization. Now, I'm working on some research with some really smart people about how to actually map maturity into the curve so that you know where you should start based on the technology you need to enable that capability, and we'll get there. But as it stands right now, the main takeaway from this document is that enabling zero trust is incumbent upon the organization, but it's based on their maturity. So if you want to do zero trust stuff, think about how mature your organization is in cybersecurity in general. Think about how much you've actually been involved in hardcore cybersecurity operations and think about how well your enterprise is defended. Uh, if, if it's pretty good. If you've done those things like assessments, you know all the devices that are talking to your network, you've done red team and penetration tests, uh, you've continued to evolve that program, you're probably getting into a more mature state and you can move further down the curve. Um, you can solve other pieces of the framework. If you're not, if you're somebody that's just like, oh, good Lord, we just figured out what this 2FA thing is okay, you probably should dial back and figure out where to start from zero and work your way through that. But again, it's a life cycle. It's based on simplicity and it's following that process around. Um, I, I personally think this is a great document. Um, I think there was some really amazing people that were involved and helped author it um, from outside of NIST, within the, the vendor community, within the research community, etc. So it's great that we've got this in front of the DOD folks.
Okay, so wrap up there. Basically, that's a breakdown on the uh, the NIST Zero Trust document that was recently published. Main thing, uh, this is the first publication. It's going to take a while for it to get anywhere. Don't expect Zero Trust compliance standards to all of a sudden show up in the DOD. Um, this is a draft publication, which means if you think it's absolute crap or you think that you've got a better way to do it or you're smarter than all the people that wrote it, great. Submit something in, get it in there, and start you know fighting up that hill to... Uh, convincing us to change some of the, the guidance that's written in here. Um, this is a good starting position, in my opinion. Uh, this is different than what we would have actually thought a lot of the uh, straight-up hardcore definition of legacy zero trust was, but that's the world we live in today. Um, I, I fully expect this document to continue to evolve. I think that over the course of the next few years, there will be some compliance and uh, requirements drafted off of this. Um, it even potentially could be used to be the baseline for some legislation that works its way in. Who knows? Main point being, this is a good thing. Uh, this is a line in the sand, and this is one of the first times that we've seen the DOD, uh, especially a, uh, a big agency, dive in and say flat out, this is our whole version of this thing. This is how we think it plays in, and this is why we think it's needed. Um, so read it, get familiar with it, know it, you don't like it. Talk about it, send it in. Um, if you got anything else you want to say, you know, comment down below. Other than that, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna try and do all kinds of uh, good zero trusty cyber stuff every chance I get. Um, look forward to working with you folks.